So I will talk about the plane wave approximations for eigenvalue problems arise from uh, incommensurate system. Uh, this is joint work with Daniel Massat from University of Chicago, and my PhD student, uh, Ting Wang, Beijing Normal University, and my two collaborators, uh, Yu Zhizhou in Beijing Institute of Applied Physics and Computational Mathematics, and Nai Huizhou from Chinese Academy of Sciences. So first, we'll, I'll talk about uh, the incommensurate structures and uh, objects we are interested in, and then talk about the plane wave approximations, and then show some numerical experiment. Uh, incommensurate structures come from periodic structures. So for in a D-dimensional, uh, in D-dimensioned, the periodic structure, or the so-called Barry lattice, is defined in this way. So we have a D by D invertible matrix, and we times the integer point, and we have a D-dimensional periodic lattice. For example, in a two-dimension, if the A is given by two by two identity matrix, we have a square lattice like this. A key feature of the periodic structure is the translation invariant. So when we uh, translate the system with respect to any uh, lattice vectors, we obtain exactly the same system. But when we have a two or even more periodic uh, lattice together, we may lose this uh, translation invariance which gives us the incommensurate structure. So for two, uh, two periodic structures together, we can give a definition like this. We have, a two, we have two periodic lattice, R1 and R2. If the joint system lose the translation invariance, then we will call this system as incommensurate. For example, if the union of the two lattice uh, translated in the union of the two lattice, no matter, how you translate it, you will never attempt the, exactly the same uh, system. But uh, of course, this is not always the case. It is still possible that uh, the union of two periodic structures are still periodic with respect to some other uh, lattice constant. Then in this case, we will call it a commensary system. So this definition can be extended to uh, more layers, like three or four, even more. So we will give a one-dimensional example. So we have two periodic chains, one with a lattice constant one and the other with a lattice constant square root of two. Since uh, lattice constant are uh, rational irrational numbers, when we put these two 1D chains together, the uh, joint system lose translation invariance. So in this case, uh, we have a one dimensional incommensurate system. But uh, if we replace this lattice constant square root of two by uh, for example, 1.414, then the joint system is still periodic, but with a very large lattice constant, 1,414, then in this case, it is called commensary. The reason why we are interested in, uh, in commensary structures is due to the recently developed uh, uh, lower dimensional systems. So for uh, two-dimensional systems like graphene and boron nitride, people find that they have very special band structures and interesting properties, which uh, attract many research in interest. In particular, when we put a two or even more uh, two-dimensional system together, then the, the lattice may, can be manip manipulated uh, by twist one of the layers with respect to the other. And the uh, properties of the system can be significantly different uh, with respect to the uh, twist angles. Uh, for example, when you put the two graphene together, then the uh, joint system can be uh, insulators, uh, conductors, or even superconductors, uh, according to the angle twisted. So it is very of great interest uh, to uh, to understand, uh, to, to construct uh, numerical simulations uh, for this type of systems. Uh, but due to the loss of the uh, periodicity, so this type of problem is difficult from a mathematical point of view. There's very limited uh, math, math works uh, for this type of problems. So at least uh, uh, the, to my knowledge, uh, the existing works. Um, but most of them are uh, related to the tight binding models in electronic structure calculations. In this work, we will mainly focus on the continuous models and uh, interested in the spectrum distribution, so so-called density of state. 
So the problem that we consider in this work uh, is a simple shielding a type eigenvalue problems. So we are interested uh, in a spectral distribution of the Hamiltonian H. The operator form is simple. So there's a, a Laplacian operator corresponding to the kinetic terms. And there are potentials V1 and V2, uh, which are periodic with respect to their own lattice. And the two lattices, the R1 and R2, are incommensary. So we are interested in a spectrum of this uh, uh, simple operator. But uh, the first difficulty comes from that the operator is defined on the whole, uh, whole, dom whole domain, the whole space. And the operator kind of loses the compactness and uh, the spectrum becomes continuous. So the first thing we need to do is to justify the, what the uh, spectral distribution is. So we use the language of density of state. So if an operator has a finitely many eigenvalues, then we can define its density of state uh, like this. So we put a Dirac function to add the eigenvalues of the operator and take a sum of them and put a normalization constant Cn in front uh, so that uh, the density of state does not explode when the dimension becomes larger. And uh, this density of state should be viewed as a functional then the quantities of interest of a system can be obtained by the density of state by taking a, a, a test function G and calculate the, the function on G. So by substituting this definition of density of state into this formula, we see that uh, the quantity of interest uh, is written as a sum of G of lambda i, where lambda i are the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. And it can also be written as a trace of this operator valued function g of h. So we put an underlined here uh, for the trace because we have a normalization constant here. In, in this work, uh, we only focus on the quantity of interest in this form, but we expect uh, our following uh, algorithms and uh, analysis could be extended to uh, other properties like electric conductivity and optimal response, opt optical response. The problem uh, is uh, how to extend the definition of density of state to extended systems when the Hamiltonian has a continuous spectrum. So we will take a periodic system as an example. We consider the two-dimensional square lattice we shown before. If we take a unit cell and uh, put the periodic boundary conditions and calculate uh, the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian we show, by, by some given uh, numerical discretization, we can uh, obtain the eigenvalues and we plot it in this uh, axis here. By refining the numerical discretization, we get a higher and higher accuracy, but the number of eigenvalues in this low energy region, region does not uh, change. But when we increase the size of supercell, use the same numer numerical discretization to simulate uh, the spectrum of the Hamiltonian, we obtained more eigenvalues in the same region. And we increased the uh, supercell size further, we obtained uh, more and more eigenvalues. And at a so-called uh, small dynamic limit, uh, we have this type of continuous spectrums. But uh, for periodic systems, uh, it is fortunate that uh, Fortunate, we have a so-called Brock's decomposition to characterize or even uh, simulate uh, this uh, continuous spectrum. So the Pro Brock's decomposition is that uh, the Hamiltonian for this periodic system on the whole space can be written as a direct sum of H of K, where K is the, K is the point in the unicell of reciprocal lattice or the so-called first brilliant zone. To obtain the spectrum of the uh, Hamiltonian on a whole space, it is only necessary to consider this uh, operator H of K on the unit cell with periodic boundary conditions. Then we just take the union of the spectrum and uh, again, uh, obtain the, the original spectrum of the original Hamiltonian. So we give the schematic plot here, uh, which is a uh, called the band structure in physics language. So here in the x axis, uh, we, uh, we can see it's a demand for the variable k here. Then for each k, since the operator h of k is defined uh, on a bounded uh, demand and with periodic bounded conditions, 
we can obtain the, the eigenvalues, discrete eigenvalues of this operator. And we vary k. We, uh, for each different k, we, have the, uh, we, we can obtain the similar eigenvalues. Then the, then the uh, spectrum of the whole Hamiltonian is the union of uh, the, the spectrum of all the k, all the h of k's. Then we can plot the density of states of this, uh, this operator. We see that uh, when the bands are flat, means that there are uh, more probability that the eigenvalues appears in this region. So we have a higher density of states. Otherwise, we have a lower uh, density of state. Then the accuracy of the density of states depend not only on the resolution of the eigenvalue of sim, sim, uh, single operator f, h of k, but also depends on the accuracy of this uh, integration. So the, the Brisbane zone integration on the so-called k-sampling. So you have to uh, put a more k point to obtain uh, the discrete eigenvalues of different h of k so that uh, a more accurate density of state can be obtained. But unfortunately, uh, since we lose the translation invariance of the in, in incommensal system, uh, this type of uh, block decomposition cannot be applied to incommensal structures. And I give the some uh, schematic plot of the metric structures for periodic and the incommensal system. If we use some uh, periodic basis functions to discretize the Hamiltonian by arranging the, uh, the indexes, uh, the Hamiltonian of the periodic system can be uh, can be written in this in, can be given in this uh, plot. So we have that uh, it has a clear block structure. Then the spectrum of the whole Hamiltonian can be attended by calculating the spectrum of each subblock. Now each block corresponding to a k point. And uh, so oh, the whole spectrum can be obtained by the block decomposition. But uh, for incommensary structures, the different blocks uh, kind of couple together by some other uh, matrix element. So no matter how you rearrange the, uh, the, the, the matrix indices, you will never get a block structure like this. So to define the density of state in the thermodynamic limit of the incommensal resistance, uh, we have to start from the beginning. So this is the Hamiltonian operator we have, the Laplacian plus the, the potential with respect to two uh, incommensal periodic lattice. So first uh, we put a characteristic function on a bounded domain with radius r. Then this operator hr can be viewed as a restriction of the Hamiltonian on a bounded domain with some appropriate boundary conditions. Then the eigenvalues of uh, this uh, restricted uh, operator can be obtained by taking the sum of g of lambda i and uh, averaged by the volume of this domain. Then we can take the thermodynamic limit by taking the r to infinity. And uh, if this limit exists and it is the uh, density of states we are interested in for the incommensary system. So the first question is, does this thermodynamic limit exist uh, for incommensary systems? So uh, we justify that uh, this limit does exist. Uh, if the test function G is sufficiently smooth, then the thermodynamic limit of the density of state uh, we defined in the previous slides exists. And we can give the explicit uh, formula for this uh, density of state. So here, gamma one and gamma two, are the unique self of the two lattice, R1 and R2. Here, sigma of an operator represents the symbol of a Posito differential operator A. And here, H of B1 and B2 is the shifted operator where the potential V1 and V2 are shifted by a vector B1 and B2. The reason why we use the Posito differential operator language in this formula is that the trace of the operator can be easily, uh, relatively easily represented and uh, calculated uh, by a symbolic calculation of a Posito differential operator. But of course, uh, this formula cannot be used directly for simulations or numerical calculations. We need uh, some efficient uh, numerical schemes to evaluate uh, this thermodynamic limit. So what people 
uh, did uh, in physics is to use the super cell approximation for incommensal resistance. So in other words, they construct a, a commensary approximations of the original incommensal system by some artificially strained. For example, in the one dimensional incommensal systems we show in the beginning, we have a lattice constant one and square root of two. This is the incommensal system, but uh, instead of simulating the original incommensary uh, one dimensional system, uh, the second lattice is strained to a, a different uh, lattice with lattice constant 1.414. This is the uh, relative good approximation to this R2. But uh, the good thing is that the, the join system now uh, has a translation with, uh, uh, large, uh, with some lattice constant like 1,014, uh, 1,414. And though it is a very big supercell, but uh, still, uh, the algorithms for periodic systems can be used to simulate in this system. Then the density of state uh, obtained by this simulation is viewed as an approximation of the original incommensary structures. And of course, uh, the, the more accurate the approximation of this uh, square root of two you have, the more accurate result you obtain for the density of state but which means you have, to, you have to take larger and larger supercells and uh, use very huge computational cost uh, for simulating a very large periodic systems. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, well, it's more of a comment. In nature, you never have infinite systems. You always have a boundary or a dislocation or a defect. So maybe it's more appropriate to to have something like that. Um, um, I mean, actually, these two-dimensional systems are not really very big in this mathematical sense. You may only have a thousand atoms um, before there's some dislocation or defect. Yes. Uh, uh, in this work, uh, we haven't really considered the defected system and uh, only consider the uh, periodic structures and uh, with the number of atoms uh, significantly larger than a thousand or even uh, 10,000. It's, uh, it's like a, 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 so it, since the number of atoms uh, is, too large uh, with this uh, uh, under risk consideration. So we will view the system as an infinite instead, uh, also called extended systems. And we haven't considered any defect uh, or, the, or the boundary effect. Yes. So uh, what, what we uh, do in this work is to construct a uh, plane wave approximations to directly discretize the original incommensary systems. The reason we use plane wave discretization is uh, because the incommensary structures uh, consi uh, is consist of uh, uh, periodic lattice. So it is natural to think about using the Fourier basis. So the basis functions is, uh, look like this, the e to i kx, where k is in a reciprocal space, the same uh, so space Rd. Then the, the integration should be uh, rewrite because it is, uh, it is on the whole space. So we redefine the integral by this uh, average integral. We took a, a, a bounded domain and uh, do the integration and average with respect to the volume of this domain and take the R to the infinity. Mm. Within this uh, integral, then we see that uh, uh, any two different uh, plane waves are orthonormal uh, under with respect to this integral. Then the basis functions we used or the wave vector we use is uh, G1 plus G2, where G1 is uh, the lattice vector in a reciprocal lattice of the first lattice, and G2 is the second reciprocal lattice. 
uh, since the two lattice R1 and R2 are incommensurate, so we have the so-called uh, agorosity properties. That an uh, integer combination of these two lattices uh, is uniformly densely uh, distributed over the whole whole space. Then we can use this uh, basic set to discretize the original Hamiltonian and uh, write it down the formally in this way. The matrix element has three parts. The first part it corresponds to the Laplacian operator, so uh, all the kinetic terms. Because we use G1 plus G2, so the kinetic energy is G1 plus G2 square. And the second part and third part correspond to the uh, two potentials with respect to different lattices. We see that uh, the, the, the matrix on the discrete operators is kind of now in the higher dimension because uh, we have a two product of the two reciprocal lattice, R1 star and R2 star. So the reciprocal space now uh, is essentially uh, D by D, uh, RD by RD uh, space. So we have a, a intuitive interpretation uh, for these uh, higher dimensional formulations. So in the real space. So we rewrite uh, the original uh, Schrodinger equation for incommensurate system in RD, uh, by the periodic problems in Rd by Rd. So where the original Laplacian operator is now replaced by a direct, uh, directional different derivatives in this way. So it, the direction is like a, a, in a dynode, it's R1 plus R2. Then the two potentials V1 R and V2 of R is now lifted to different dimensions. So because uh, originally they are in the same space, but now the second potential is lifted to, to another dimension in Rd. So formally, we can see that by taking a diagonal of this eigenvalue problem, say R equals R prime, we obtain the original uh, Schrodinger equations for incommensurate resistance in Rd. The advantage of doing that is that uh, by lifting the potential, the incommensurate problems is now uh, changed into a periodic problem. But uh, the disadvantage is that uh, it is lifted to a higher dimensional and the computational cost increased significantly. So we need to think about uh, how to cut off the, uh, the basis set or the pen waves and pen waves uh, wave vectors. So in our original work, we use very naive the uh, L2 cutoff. So we so this plot gives a schematic plot of the lattice vectors for one dimensional systems because we have uh, lifted uh, the dimension. So the reciprocal lattice is now two dimensional. We have G1 and G2 in two uh, different uh, axes. So we use this uh, gray dark part from the truncation in our original work. So it's G1 square plus G2 square, uh, it's less than the energy cutoff. But we see that now the basis functions, the, the size of the basis set uh, is significantly larger than larger compared with the, the periodic system calculations because the dimension has lifted uh, to, uh, to a double size. But uh, when we plot the eigenfunctions uh, by, uh, by this uh, prime wave method, we see that uh, the, the non vanished coefficient. Uh, only appear in this region. And uh, vectors, the vector entries vanish quickly away from this region uh, of the dino. So we may think of, okay, maybe uh, we can use a better truncation to reduce the computational cost by this rectangular. So we write it, uh, uh, we, re we improve the truncation, the na original naive truncation uh, by, a, by a new one with different parameters, W and L. Here, W is the truncation in, in the G1 plus G2 direction, and L is the truncation uh, for the G1 minus G2 direction. From the picture, we see that uh, the number of basis functions has been significantly reduced. And in our analysis, uh, we uh, kind of understand why this truncation uh, is so much better and by reducing the basis set while keeping the same accuracy. Because in this G1 plus G2 direction, it corresponds to the adding high frequencies of the 
plane wave vectors. If you see the, the discrete Hamiltonian, the kinetic part corresponds to G1 plus G2. So when the problem on the operator is smooth, on the potential is smooth, uh, the eigenfunctions, uh, the coefficient of the eigenfunctions uh, vanish quickly in this direction. And the G1 minus G2 correspond to uh, the supercell size direction. So increasing error correspond to increasing the supercell uh, super size or the uh, compare with the periodic systems, it corresponding to take more K point for the Brillouin zone integration. So now we perform a numerical analysis for this truncation. So when G is smooth, we see that uh, the limit of this reciprocal representation of the density of state exists by taking the limit of W and L goes to infinity. We see that the density of state of this uh, discrete size Hamiltonian uh, exists. And we also see that this limit matched the thermodynamic limit in real space we obtained uh, in the previous section, uh, in, the, in, the previous, uh, in the previous part of our work. And we also uh, write down the explicit formula for the some other, uh, for this limit in a reciprocal space. Here, this h hat to see is the shifting of the discrete Hamiltonian. So when you have a, when you calculate the periodic uh, problems uh, by taking the k sampling in the Brillouin zone, you also have a shifting k here. And we also obtained explicit bonds with respect to the two numerical parameters, L and W. We see that uh, the error decays uh, inverse with, inversely with respect to the truncation L and exponentially fast with respect to truncation W, which explains uh, this phenomenon, why the, uh, why the eigenfunctions are concentrated in this region and why we can uh, improve the original uh, plane wave cutoff by this rectangular and save the computational cost. And the remaining problem is that uh, uh, the cost uh, is still huge, uh, with, it's still large with respect to this truncation error because the error decays uh, uh, relatively slow with respect to this parameter. So we think of improved uh, uh, numerical scheme by uh, using some k sampling or sampling schemes on the reciprocal set, uh, space. So we put a uniform mesh on, uh, on a square, uh, minus w, w to the d in a reciprocal space, and uh, put a uniform mesh on it. Then for each mesh or each grid point, we calculate, uh, the, uh, we calculate g of h hat uh, with the mesh element zero, zero, and uh, kind of performed a numerical integration to, of perform numerical integrations of this limit and obtained uh, another numerical scheme based on this sampling. We see that uh, by using this sampling scheme, the error deca now decays exponentially fast with respect to the truncation L, and again with respect to W. And we also see that uh, uh, the error decays exponentially fast with respect to the grid point uh, for the K sampling. So now we have a really efficient, uh, uh, efficient uh, scheme by based on plane wave approximations and the computational cost can be comparable to the simulation of a periodic systems. Now we'll show some numerical experiment uh, uh, by using our uh, plane wave method. So we consider a uh, one dimensional incommensary uh, systems. The, the Hamiltonian is a linear operator with two uh, potentials. Here, the lattice constant for V1 is square root of five minus one, and the lattice constant for V2 is two. Uh, we put the two periodic potentials on these two lattice respectively. We see that uh, the regularity on the smoothness of the potential depends on the parameter gamma here. Then the density of states we consider is the energy with uh, some uh, Fermi-Dirac distributions. Uh, uh, written like this. So we first uh, use the, uh, the truncation, uh, LW truncation without the sampling. We see that the error uh, decays inversely with respect to L, which match our uh, theoretical prediction. 
and uh, it does decay exponentially fast with respect to the W truncation. And uh, when, the, when the smoothness of the potential becomes worse, then we have a slower decay. Now, by adding the sampling scheme, we see that uh, both algorithms now decay exponentially fast with respect to the L and W truncations. We also consider two dimensional uh, incommensurate systems. We have a two lattice, uh, A1 and A2. They have the same lattice constant, but uh, the blue lattice uh, is rotated uh, with respect to the uh, red triangular lattice by uh, angle theta. So we have an uh, incommensurate structure like this. And we again put the uh, periodic potentials on the two lattices respectively and perform the simulation based on using the prime wave method. We see that uh, the error decays inversely with respect to L and uh, exponentially with respect to W again. So the regular and the potential is the faster convergence rate we have. By using the sampling scheme in the reciprocal space, uh, again, we have a uh, exponential convergence rate uh, uh, for evaluating the density of state. Okay, so uh, a little bit fast. And now to come to the summary. So first we justify the thermodynamic limit of the density of state uh, for incommensurate resistance in the real space formulation. And we can design the prime wave approximations and uh, we with the clever, clever uh, truncation uh, in the different directions. And we derive the explicit, explicit error bounds uh, with respect to the numerical parameters. Then what we are doing is try to extend those works to the full DFT calculations, and, uh, which is nonlinear eigenvalue problems and uh, raise uh, significant difficulties for the analysis. So here's the reference. And uh, that's all for my talk. Thank you for your attention.